So for tutorial 5, uh, we have to find the gains KD, KP and KI um, to solve this problem. Uh, we have to use pole placement techniques uh, to work out what these values are. Okay. We give us some specs for the control system. It says that the, uh, the response needs to be second order dominant, 60% maximum overshoot to a step input, and with a 95% output setting of 2 seconds. So, 16%... 16% over, uh, overshoot from the um, data sheet or second order response graphs um, we can see that this means that the zeta, the uh, damping ratio must be around 0 0.5 okay and now we know that the angle between the origin and uh, the poles for the second order dominant response, um, the cosine of that angle must be equal to zeta. And so from this we can work out what that angle is. So the inverse cosine of 0 0.5. And that angle comes out to be 1.0472 radians. Okay. Um, so we know that uh, with, if we're plotting this on the S plane, okay, this is our, this is our sigma, this is our um, imaginary, so um, uh, omega d j, okay, and we know that our points, second order dominant means that we have points here and here, okay, and obviously we can work out this angle is phi, okay. The su settling time we know is going to be minus 3 divided by sigma as, a, as the rule of thumb that we use. That means that sigma must be minus 3 divided by 2 seconds. So that comes out to be minus 1.5. So on our graph we know that this is minus 1.5, okay. Now that we have a value for sigma, we can work out what the omega d is, and that damp natural frequency, which will give us our pole placements. And so we know that this tangent of phi, opposite over adjacent, we know that's going to be omega d divided by minus sigma. And so we know that that's going to be uh, omega d it's going to be minus sigma times by tangent of phi. So that's going to be 1.5 times by the tangent of 1.0472. And that gives us an omega value of 2.598 radians per second. So our two poles, second order poles, All right, we've got um, S equals minus 1.5 plus 2.598J and S equals minus 1.5 minus 2.598J. So that gives us a characteristic equation, which is second order. So we take minus 1.5 plus 2.598j multiplied by minus 1.5 minus 2.598j. If you do the sums, this comes out to be s squared plus 3s plus 9. Now, so that... But the problem we've got here is that's the second order, that's our second order dominant response. But you can notice up here in the solution that we've got a third order system. So we need to add another pole somewhere on this uh, uh, this um, diagram. And what we do is we add a pole over here, as long as that this distance here, if I call that distance sigma, this, ne this distance here needs to be greater than 5 sigma. The further to the left those poles are, the quicker they decay, and since we want a second order dominant response, we want that part of the effect of that pole to decay very quickly. And so that's why we place it five times further away. Five times further away would mean that that third pole
we'd have s equals minus 7.5. And so our characteristic equation now becomes third order. We have s plus 7.5 times by s squared plus 3s plus 9 equals 0. And so let's multiply that out. We've got s to the power of 3, okay, plus um, 3s squared plus 9s plus 7.5s squared plus, uh, what's that, 15, 22.5s plus um, 7.5 times by 9, 67.5. Equals zero. <clears throat> and so now we can match up in question, and we can see quite clearly that um, what four plus KD four plus KD must equal. We've got 11.5, no, sorry, 10.5. So that means that KD must be 6.5. And we've got, um, what have we got? We've got 12 plus KP. 12 plus KP equals, we've got the S term, so we've got 9 plus 22.5, so that's going to be, 31.5 that means that kp must be 19.5 believe and then ki is going to be equal to 67.5 okay so there's the solutions to those terms there now clearly, if you chose a number different for seven minus seven point five, um, that's greater than well, that's further to the left than minus seven point five, then you get slightly different answers. But that um, that would also be correct.